Now I have my main menu controller scene open. And this scene uh, demonstrates how to use VR interaction with a desktop VR controller like an Oculus Touch controller or an Open VR controller, aka HTC Vive controller. So in my scene hierarchy, I have a, a player object, and underneath that, I have right hand, left hand, and my main camera. So my main camera is my head, and then I have my right and left hand all under the player. And then my event system and video manager are going to be the same as the previous scenes. Um, just like before, we are loading these three scenes from this starting scene. I still have my fade out image. And then I have main menu manager. And this main menu manager um, does not have the selection sliders like the gaze based interaction because we can just directly point our controller to interact with the UI. Let's see that in action. I'm going to just make sure I have VR enabled. I do. I'm going to hit play here. Find my headset. <laughs> And just turning on my controllers. There we go. So you can see my controller is tracking. And when I go over any of the objects and pull the trigger, it will trigger the next scene to load. So this is the basis of um, controller UI interaction here. Let's take a look at how that's working. Um, I'm going to open up my main menu manager here and see I still have my control UI. Okay, let's take a look at the different options. So my buttons have a box collider on them. And that's it. All they have is a box collider on them. They don't need um, anything else in order to be detected by the controllers. Actually, all of the uh, VR magic is happening on the controller game objects themselves. So if I go up to my player game object in the hierarchy, let's take a look at right hand. Right hand. And I'm actually using a, a model of an Oculus controller here even though I'm using an HTC Vive controller as I'm recording this, um, you could easily swap this out for any controller model. Most of them are available uh, for free from the respective parties that produce those controllers. Um, or you could use hands or magic wands or whatever you like. Um, but what's important is on this game object, I have a tracked pose driver script. So it's this component here. This is actually built into Unity. This isn't specific for this project. Um, this is what allows us to get immediate tracking of our devices. So I have the device type set to generic XR controller. It is the right controller because it's the right hand. The tracking type is rotation and position. Um, and that's because I am using a six DOF controller. I get rotation and position. And update type, uh, we want to update the position of the controller on update and before every render. That'll give us really smooth tracking. And then if we go down to the right controller um, PF game object, which means right controller prefab, um, we can see on here we have, uh, first of all, we have the uh, mesh renderer for the actual model of the controller. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, and then we have this Raycast input script. So this script is um, what actually what shoots a Raycast out of the controller like we um, had a Raycast coming from the gaze, the headset in the gaze example. And then we have a primary input axis. So this, this is actually labeled as Oculus primary input axis. But because um, Unity's uh, VR SDK is oh, 
written cross-platform, we could actually go ahead and use that for the HTC Vive controller as well. Let's take a look at that script. All right, so the string name is Oculus Primary Input Access, and that's just secondary input index trigger. So that means that is the index of the index trigger, like where your index finger is on the secondary controller. Um, and a handy way to find out which buttons go to which string names is to go to this page in the documentation. Um, it is the VR input page. So right now I'm looking at the open VR controllers. Um, here we can scroll down to system mappings. Which one are we using? So that was labeled as Oculus secondary index trigger. Okay, so that's going to be our right controller trigger, secondary index trigger. So our right hand is going, our right hand uh, trigger is going to click the buttons in this case. And that makes sense because we're having the ray cast come out of our right hand controller. So we have this raycast input script on the right controller, but we don't have it on the left. We we don't want to raycast coming out of both controllers. Then we'd be like laser sword fighting with ourselves. It's a little weird. And then I have a VR line renderer script also attached to my object here. And that's because this raycast input script is going to render using this VR line renderer script, and that's what gets a really clean line rendering in VR that's easy to see. So the most important thing here is just knowing that we can change this primary input axis and that it doesn't only apply to Oculus. So I could change this to be a primary index trigger and that would work for the left hand. All right. And we also have the ability to toggle on and off our menu now because we're using a controller. We have extra buttons available. And that is a nice feature to just be able to hide the menu when you don't want to see it. You don't necessarily want a menu in your face when you're viewing a 360 video. And that functionality is on the main menu manager. So if I go to my main menu manager game object, it is under my menu manager script. And let's, let's just open that up to get a reminder of what this is doing. So we have this string here called Oculus menu toggle. It's uh, using button two. And then on update here, we're calling this check for input function. And if we go down to that, we can see that we're checking, we're checking for input. We're getting, are we getting that button um, either from the Oculus or the Google VR controller, which we'll get into in a second. And if so, we're just gonna toggle the menu and we're gonna play a little audio um, that the menu toggles on and off with. Uh, so that's pretty simple. Um, the toggle menu script here is just basically turning the menu on and off it's setting it to be active or inactive based on its previous state. All right, now we're using button two and it says Oculus menu toggle, but it could actually be any VR input. I just labeled it as Oculus menu toggle because I was using an Oculus at the time of writing these scripts. Um, let's see if there's a button two, the button two on the Oculus controller has a corresponding button on the Vive controller. I'm gonna to go to my handy page up here. Okay, so button two on the Oculus controller is the B button, that's gonna be the right hand. And if we go down here, these are the HTC Vive controller and puts Oculus touch controllers. And actually, button two doesn't seem like it has a corresponding button for the Vive controller. However, we do have access to button one and three, 
which overlap on both and those are going to be the right controller menu and the left controller menu on the Vive controller. So the controller button is this one here. But so that was what was that button one? That's A and button three is X. Okay, I think I think it's fine. We could switch that to be button one. And then whether or not we're using an Oculus touch controller or a Vive controller, there's a button on each that will toggle on and off the toggle on and off the menu. And I'm I'm gonna choose button one because I want to keep it on the right hand just to be consistent. So my right hand is the controller that is uh, shooting out the Raycast. It's also the controller that has the trigger functionality enabled to select UI objects. So it makes sense to have the button on that side as well. In theory, we don't even need the left controller. Um, we're just putting it in there because usually when you're trying a VR controller experience, you have two controllers. All right, so I'm just going to change this to say button one and save. Now let's hit play. Let me grab my headset and I'm picking up my right controller. And oh, actually, that's my left controller. Here's my right controller. And I'm going to hit the menu button that's going to toggle on and off the menu. So then when I'm viewing my lovely VR scene here, I can turn the menu off and look around and enjoy the video. And then when I get tired of this video, I can pull the menu back up uh, and select another one. So that covers uh, using Oculus touch controllers and HTC Vive controllers to do some basic interactions. Uh, what's nice about uh, this script here, this Raycast input script, is it's really all that we need to get the input from both of those controllers. We don't need any additional plugins or SDKs. All of this is using the native input that's built into Unity.